What's going on guys? Welcome to the golfpracticeguides.com blog where today we're talking about how to fix a duck hook. My name is Nick Foy, the founder of this website. You can learn more about it by checking it out by going to golfpracticeguides.com. And if you're new to the website, we've got all kinds of helpful golf tips, golf drills for you. And more importantly, if you jump on our email newsletter, we notify you by sending you these articles every time we publish a new one. So you can join our email list and get these tips sent to your inbox. All right, so today we're talking about the duck hook. Now, when I first started playing, I had a slice and I started overcompensating, trying to stop my slice and turn it into a draw that it eventually turned into a hook. So then I had to try and get swing lessons and figure out how to fix the duck hook. So I've got several tips for you today. You can try to fix your hook if you've got one of those balls that just takes off on you and starts heading towards out of bounds, making your heart race as you're worried that you know, you're gonna hit a house or go out of bounds and cause yourself some penalty strokes. I've been there before, so let's dive into this review. All right, so the good news if you're hitting a hook shot it's not all negative. Number one, you don't have a slice anymore. You are drawing the golf ball. You're just overdoing it. And a draw is what you want to have if you're trying to gain distance off the tee and on those long approach shots from 180, 190 yards out with your irons. So the draw is ideal, the swing that most people want to start with, uh, but they end up starting with a slice and eventually they get themselves to that draw. But a lot of times it turns into a hook. So the hook, basically you've got three types of hooks, all right? The first, you've got the ball that starts out to the right, and then it severely hooks left of the intended target. So maybe it, it's like a big banana shot that goes way out to the right, then it comes back and you think, oh, it's gonna go to my target. Well, then it keeps going left and it ends up going left to your target, all right? Next, we've got the duck hook that starts out pretty straight down the fairway, and then it just takes off whipping left of the fairway into the rough or out of bounds. And then third, we've got that duck hook that's probably the least fun, and this is the one that starts out to the left, and then it keeps going further left. And that's the one that gets you in danger. This is also known as the pull hook. So basically the three different causes of these hooks, it's all about how your ball flight starts out. So it's how your face angle is at impact. So when your face is open, that's what's causing the ball to start out to the right, and then you've got that hook spin on it, so it ends up hooking back left of your target. When you square up at impact, that's what starts the ball off straight, and then it hooks off to the left. And then lastly, if you've got that shut face at impact, that's what we get that pull hook. All right, so it's a combination of that face angle along with your swing path. So if you're swinging out to the right, you're swinging dead straight, or you're pulling things left, combined with the shut face, the open face, the squared up face, that's what's gonna cause each of those different three types of hooks. All right, here's something important that I did bold I want you guys to take note of. Now, the way the golf ball starts out initially has everything to do with the angle of the club face. Many people think the ball starts out initially due to your swing path, but this is not true. Let's, let's give you an example of it of a basketball situation. Let's say you had a basketball. You roll it on the floor towards a wall, and let's say the wall is angled then this basketball is not going to bounce straight back off the wall and come back to you because the wall is angled. It's going to bounce off the wall in the direction that the wall is angled. This is the exact same with a golf ball. Your golf ball naturally wants to go in the direction that the club face is angled. So at impact when your club face is open, that's where we talk about it points right of your target and the ball is going to start off going right of the target. When the, when the face is square, like a wall being square on with the basketball example, that's going to cause the ball to start square or head straight initially. Lastly, if your club face is angled closed at impact, then when it hits the golf ball, it's going to start sending that golf ball left of the target, which is how you kind of get that pull hook. So the reality that I just shared with you is counterintuitive. Again, most golfers think that the initial ball direction is caused by the club path or when you're swinging to the right, when you're swinging straight, or when you're pulling a swing to the left. And that's what they think is what causes that initial ball flight, how the ball starts out. But swing path is actually what creates the spin on the ball. So when the swing path comes from inside and it heads out to the right of the target, it causes this counterclockwise spin on the golf ball at impact, which is basically known as the draw spin. So if you've got an open face and you're swinging out to the right, 
that's going to start the ball out to the right, but it's also going to cause that left to right spin that's going to make the ball end up drawing. Alternatively, a swing path to the inside of your target line, that's going to cut across the golf ball, creating clockwise spin on the ball. This clockwise spin is what makes the ball fly left to right, known as a slice. So the hook is like a right to left uh, ball spin, a counterclockwise spin, and that's what makes it go left. So again, when you cut across the ball, that's going to put that spin slice on it and then combine that with, you know, hitting it out to the left to start out. If you've got a shut face, that's how you get those pull slices. Now on the reverse side, when you've got the duck hook, you're, you're swinging inside to outside. So your swing path is good. It's causing the ball to get that, that counterclockwise draw spin when you hit inside out. Now the, the difference is that you're leaving the face open and that's what's pushing the ball out to the right. All right, so it's a difficult concept to grasp. You have to mentally think about each scenario of what your swing path combined with uh, what, what the face angle is doing to figure out how you're getting these different shot combinations. Uh, but how to fix the duck hook. So to correct a duck hook, you need to figure out why you're swinging inside out through impact. So if you're putting way too much draw spin on it, then you're probably a pretty severe inside to outside swing path. So you also need to figure out how to get that face more closed at impact because that's what's causing uh, you know, the ball to start out to the right. So we got to square that face up more so that the ball starts off straighter and we got to cut down the inside to outside swing path more so that it keeps the ball you know, from putting as much draw spin or hook spin on it. So we can start off by investigating the grip, your posture, your alignment, your swing path, swing plane, release, lots of different factors here that could be contributing to it. So analyze each one, one by one. It's important you set up like a video, videotape your swing. Also talk with a swing professional and you might be able to figure out which area of your swing is causing you know, some of these issues. For the swing path fix, one thing we can do is start by analyzing our posture. So if you find yourself leaning back too much on your rear side or getting your rear shoulder too low at impact, it could be encouraging an excessive inside takeaway. Make sure that you feel more stacked where your shoulders are on top of your hips and that your weight's more 50-50 with your irons and a bit more on your backside, 40-60 with your driver. In addition to an inside takeaway, we also want to analyze your downswing club position. So when the club head lags behind the chest, it gets trapped and comes from the inside through impact. The last thing you want to do when duck hooking is get the club behind you too much and get it trapped. This is going to cause you to flip your hands and wrists at impact to catch the club head up, which only creates the shut face in addition to an inside to outside swing path. So try keeping the club in your arms in front of your chest throughout your swing. Don't let it get trapped behind your body. It's when you get started at address, so don't change that relationship by, you know, if you get it started right at address, it should stay pretty consistent throughout your swing. So a swing path practice drill that we've got for you to try at the driving range. You could set down your golf driver head cover about six inches uh, to a foot ahead of the golf ball. So this way, if you've got an inside to outside swing and you, you come from the inside and the ball start or your swing path starts heading outside the ball after impact, it's going to run into that driver, that head cover. So that head cover kind of serves as like a gate kind of blocking you. So you got to, it forces you to come back to the inside on the swing path or more square. That way you don't go too far outside and hit that head cover. Now here's a fix for your release. So loosen your timing or sequence through impact can certainly cause the club face to shut too quickly. So if you're releasing the club a little too uh, early, you could be shutting the face too early. So be sure to keep a solid kinematic sequence in your swing, allowing your body parts to fire in the correct order. This means basically you need to start your downswing from the ground up. First you fire your hips, then your shoulders, then your arms, then your hands. If you get out of the sequence and you start firing with your upper body first in the downswing, it can often cause the closed face. You can also find you're pulling the ball left when your arms get ahead of your body. Just like when your arms get too far behind your body, that can also cause blocking where you hit shots out to the right. So if you're able to kind of get your sequence timing between your hips, your arms, your shoulders, your wrist, your, your release, you're going to find the ball go straighter. The body turn fix. So if you're afraid of hitting the ball left of your target, your tendency is to slow down your body turn. You think if your upper torso turns left of the target, the ball will follow. Ironically, the opposite is true. 
By slowing down or even stopping your turn toward the target, your arms and hands whip through the hitting area and a shut club face produces. So pre prevent the club face from getting shut at impact. You've got to keep turning your torso. Now it's hard to convince yourself to do this, but you've got to trust it. Let your chest and hips rotate forward until your shirt buttons and belt buckle point left of your target. This stops the club face from flipping closed and will keep your ball in play. Next, we've got the grip fix. So a strong grip is another common error with players who have a duck hook. If you're gripping too much you know, on the strong side, that's going to cause the ball to move more right to left. That's why they also talk about on a slice, if you've got too weak of a grip, you're probably seeing the ball slice more often. So to calm the hook down to a manageable draw, you could simply adjust your right hand to a more neutral position or weaken up your grip to more of a weak grip, and that could counter your hook and turn it more into like a fade type of shot. The alignment fix, if you're hooking, you might have an alignment issue. So if you're aiming at your target, you might find that you're not aligned square with your target. Instead, your feet, your knees, your hips, your shoulders, your forearms, all these things could be closed in relation to the target, which could cause that, that pull hook type shot. So here's an example of a square alignment where your feet are properly aligned with your ball alignment to your target, your shoulders, your arms, your hips, everything is aligned pointing in the right direction at the target. If you were to open up your stance, you'd be having an open stance. This can cause a slice. If you had a closed stance, that could cause the hook. All right, so concluding thoughts as I kind of went through each section in a quick summary, you can go through here and read the article more in depth. Again, I probably botched a couple of these paragraphs just going through it quickly, but I'm trying to keep the video short. So final thoughts here. As you've learned from experience, a duck hook's pretty nasty ball flight and it's hard to get rid of. But some of these changes we talked about today, the different fixes and these different categories could do the trick for you. It could be a number of things that's causing your hook. So you're gonna need to analyze each of those areas of your golf game to find out which one it was that's impacting you. It could be multiple things. So again, videotape yourself and follow these tips above uh, talking about you know the different parts of your game. We've got the swing path, the release, the body turn, the grip, the alignment. So fix each of those areas and you should see your hook die down to more of a controlled draw. Lastly, we've got some golf practice plans here. You can check out step-by-step -step training plans. They give you drills, worksheets to go to the golf course and follow step-by-step. -step. Once you complete the program, you should see five to 10 strokes come off your golf score. And if not, then you probably were doing some of the drills wrong too quickly or just weren't doing them consistently. Ideally, you try to get to the course three days a week in these programs. You could split them up and come more often. You could split the plan up and do it six days a week. Uh, but ideally, if you if you follow these plans, you will see improvement in your golf game. We've had so many success stories come from members who have joined these programs, and I want to see you become the next person to break 80 or break 70 if you've been struggling to hit that milestone. And you can leave us a feedback. You know, if you complete these programs, let us know how it went for you, how much your score improved. And lastly, if you don't want to join one of those programs, you can opt in to our email community. Again, we'll send you free golf tips every week, blog articles, uh, lessons, drills, and you can start off with our 15 practice drill PDF file that we give you as an incentive when you first join our email community. Thanks so much for watching today's video on the duck hook examples of how to fix your, your nasty hook that's costing you strokes. For more, you can stop by golfpracticeguides.com to our blog and see all of our other articles in our different categories. Or if you're on YouTube, check out our playlist, hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button, and you can see all the different content we've got on our YouTube channel. Take care.